Hello and welcome to another video on this channel. So if you've seen the last videos, you saw me using a lot of automatic focus bracketing, which is a feature of the R5. And I got some questions about it because what it does, if you switch to it, the electronic shutter of the R5 is used. And that means you don't get 14 bit RAW files anymore. You just get 12 bits, so two bit less. And what does it really mean? Did I notice anything in the field till now? I have to say not really, but still I wanted to do a little more close look here and see if there is really a difference because what I know and what I definitely always tell my post-processing tutorials is, for example, if you're working in Photoshop, I always encourage you to use 16-bit versus 8-bit when you process your photos. And the reason for that is 8-bit, although it also can display a lot of colors, if you do curves adjustments, contrast adjustments, color adjustments, what can happen is you get some banding or the colors kind of break apart much faster than if you were to use 16-bit. And I put up a little screenshot here where you see it side by side for just a gradient from black to white where I did some curves and here you see that there's banding starting to happen on the 8-bit file versus no banding on the 16-bit. So it's good to have more bits if you do processing on your photos. And yeah, now how is it with 12 versus 14, which is just a little bit in terms of 12 to 14, but it's actually quite a lot um, if you calculate the number of colors 14 bits can provide you versus 12 bits but 12 bits already so much that I wouldn't expect to see much difference especially not if you don't do much processing but what we're going to do now is I will take photos compare them I will underexpose overexpose everything I'll also do very heavy processing just to see if there's actually a difference if I have to worry when I use the automated bracketing for the R5 and yeah Let's just start with a test. I'll quickly show you what I do. And yeah, then we're gonna look at the files, do some typical pixel peeping, and yeah, see what we get from the 12 bit versus the 14 bit. So for this test, I use my typical indoor target here in the office of the map of the world, which I already used to test sharpness of different lenses. So what I have here, I have the R5 set up, focused on this target at 35 millimeters. And what I'm now going to do is I take a couple of photos with the electronic shutter and then I'm going to repeat it with the first curtain shutter, which I usually use for landscapes. So the electronic shutter will be 12 bit RAWs and the first curtain should give me 14 bit RAWs. And I want to see if there's really a difference. Now the problem is here there's not much dynamic range. So it's just a plain subject and I don't expect any differences. Same as when I'm shooting in the forest in subdued light. I didn't notice any difference. So what I'm gonna do instead is I gonna take a photo first where I kind of overexpose so far to the right and then I'm gonna bring down the exposure, take a normal photo and then I'm gonna go to the far left so really underexposing, pushing the exposure far to the left and I repeat the same with the first curtain shutter. And this way I'll hopefully be able to judge if there is kind of a difference in terms of quality. Also one thing to note is I'm going with ISO 400 here because the electronic shutter is limited to a maximum of 0.5 seconds. So in this controlled environment with the light here uh, it's not bright enough so I cannot uh, go with lower ISOs. But since I'm doing the same with the first curtain shutter that's even um, options so both use 400 ISO so the comparison will still be valid. So we want to see if they are later in post and Photoshop if we see maybe that the 12-bit files when I apply some curves to it or when I bring up the shadows if they fall apart faster than the 14-bit files and it doesn't matter if I test this with 400 or ISO 100. So that's that. I now take the photos, then we're gonna head over to Photoshop or Lightroom. Let's do Lightroom and have a look at the files. But before you do so, I want to show you some new equipment which I got for my office. Just very quickly, I got this screen bar plus here above my monitor, which is from BenQ. So a few weeks ago, they reached out to me, said if I wanted to test it. And yeah, back then I was a bit skeptical if I needed it because most of the time, most of the day, I get good light in this room from the window, which is behind the camera. But yeah, I have to say in the afternoon, it gets darker here and usually 
uh, the monitor is then the main source of light and yeah, this is not so good. My eyes get much faster fatigued and with this screen bar plus which you put above the monitor you first of all don't get glare because it kind of goes straight down with the light beam and lights up your desk so you get a little more environmental light which is kind of nice if you're long in front of the PC um, it opens up the room a bit but not too much as if I would uh, switch on the lamp above me so this is much too bright it provides glare so I have glare on the screen so yeah, with this lamp that's designed to not give you glare but still light up your desk and I have a controller here which I can use to make it brighter, darker. I can use it to control the temperature, which is quite nice, but usually I have it at the coolest temperature, which is important if you're working on photos. Your environment should have kind of the daylight temperature. Otherwise your eyes adjust to, if you have a warm temperature, they would adjust to it. And then all your images you work on, you will make them even warmer. So it's good to have a neutrally lit environment. And that's what uh, this screen bar does. So I leave links to this in the description below if you're interested. Um, also, I got this for free just to say, but yeah, still, I think it's a nice addition. And in the beginning, as I said, I was skeptical. I didn't know I needed, but now I find myself using it all the time in the afternoon. So it's kind of nice. But now enough talk, let's quickly go and check out the 12 versus the 14-bit files. So we're here in Lightroom and first I want to show you what I did to the files. So I basically equalized the exposure here, the bright photo I brought down by minus three. So basically pushing the histogram into the medium range. So if you look at the before, it was far overexposed. So we have real overexposure warning here. So I set this to minus three and this makes it later easier to really see if there are some losses between 12 and 14 bit. Then here I just brought it down by two. This one, that's the middle one, I brought it up by 0 0.5. And then what I did with this one, because I didn't just want to push up the exposure and bring down the exposure, I also wanted to see how the files react to heavy processing. So the first thing I did, an interesting test for 12-bit files or files with a limited bit range. I changed the U here in the U saturation slider. So I brought down the reds and oranges, brought over yellows and greens. And by this, I want to see how the colors react to that and also then compare it to the 14 bits. So see if there's a difference. And here what I did, <laughs> I did a typical landscape for processing where I pushed up the contrast and then maxed out the contrast here in the curves. So something you would never do, but again, I just wanted to see how the tones behave. Then we here have the first underexposed photo, which I needed to bring up by plus three. Then here I have plus four and here you have plus five. And you see um, this was a mistake for this test. So I was using the LED lights and here you see a typical problem of electronic shutter. When you go to shorter shutter speeds, you see a little bit of bending here. So those two here, the one 250 second and the one 500 of a second, uh, those two are not ideal to compare it with the first curtain shutter, which doesn't show those bendings here. So for this reason, I took another set of photos. This time I opened the window so I had light from the outside and here I also I really underexposed so much so that I had to bring it up by plus five and also the whites so this will be the most interesting test I think so let's go through it just for your information the five stars are the ones with the first curtain shutter and the ones without the rating are the ones where I use the electronic shutter so let's start here with the overexposed photo which I brought down and put them side by side and then go really 200% and look especially here at the part where the details kind of break apart, where it was really overexposed. And I'm just interested to see if for some reason the 14-bit files captured more dynamic range here on the bright side, but it doesn't seem so. They're both relatively similar, not relatively similar, they are the same. So I don't see any difference here in the bright tones. So they both lose the same detail. So the overexposure was quite the same. So there is not really a difference here between the 12-bit file, which is on the left, and the 14-bit file on the right. Let's go to the next one, which was overexposed just by two. 
and here we see that again there's no really difference in the bright areas everything's there the colors look the same they look proper so everything looks as it should and yeah i think here in terms of exposing to the right and overexposing the 12-bit files and the 14-bit files behave the same now let's look at the first file where i did those funky color changes and just let's have a look if for some reason the 12-bit files didn't manage so here the colors are changed both sides exactly the same way also down here don't see any difference maybe here the red is a little or this orange reddish tone is a little more red than on the right side but other than that it's hard to tell if there's really a difference so i think the important thing is always 8-bit versus 12 or versus 14 so this really makes a difference as i showed you in the beginning but as soon as you are working with 12 bits upwards it doesn't seem to matter anymore if you're working with normal contrast and color adjustments and you saw even the extremes don't show a real difference here and let's just look at this extreme here for the contrast and again this is 200 percent so we're really pixel peeping here and yeah even for the contrast i don't see any additional banding introduced here on the 12-bit files where the tones are breaking apart so even if you would do such a processing to a photo <laughs> which i wouldn't encourage um, you'd be fine even with a 12-bit okay now let's look what happens when you underexpose so here the first one i brought up plus three stops so this is already something which i don't do very often but even if i did left side again the 12-bit and again also this is iso 400 the file held up quite nicely on both sides so if you look very closely you could say okay here shows a little bit more noise so and and this is the important thing so when you have less bits and you basically expand the tonal range so here i expanded a very small set of tones which were in this underexposed image and i now pulled it over to fill the complete histogram let me quickly show you what i mean so before all the tones were down here and by increasing the exposure to plus three i'm basically stretching the histogram and this stretching is where you would notice if the number of colors represented in a 12-bit file versus a 14-bit file would lead to individual pixels or colors to be separated so that you see more of a difference and i think this is happening a little bit here with the noise but it's really not much we're here 200 percent and this wouldn't hold me back from shooting 12 bit even if i wanted to push it by three stops so it's really a minimal difference i'd say and i'm not even sure if you can see it in the video so now let's go to the last photos i took the ones where i had to let me show you push by plus five so you see this is how the original photo looked so it's really nearly black so we just have a tiny part here of the histogram now i pushed it by plus five and then also brought up the whites so really stretching the tones now here it's going to be interesting to see how the 12-bit file holds up against the 14-bit file so already without zooming in you can tell here the colors on the 14-bit file a little bit more vibrant especially the blues here you see this and now let's zoom in again 200 percent and yeah now here is the first time where you really see a difference between 12-bit and 14-bit so here you see the colors are kind of breaking apart a bit especially down here in the flex you see much more noise in the 12-bit file and also let's look at this here the colors are much more defined here in the 14-bit file versus 12-bit files where the colors are basically not that defined anymore because of all the noise so here you certainly can see a difference let's also look here in the middle yeah so everywhere there's more noise and also the colors are kind of looking different so here the colors are much more clean still and here it's falling apart a bit so after all i think we found a difference between the 12-bit and the 14-bit files but those differences are only visible at the extremes and such extremes are really something i wouldn't shoot so 
if you expose like I did for this photo then you're doing something wrong in the field and if you do proper exposures which you just push by minus two or plus two then I think you won't notice a difference between a 12-bit and a 14-bit file which also means that using the automated bracketing for the R5 which I do quite a bit now in the field doesn't really decrease the image quality in a noticeable way so just be aware of that if you want to really push it or have to really push it use the first curtain or mechanical shutter and in my opinion this should just be your default setting on the camera and then when you use automatic bracketing the camera will automatically switch to the electronic shutter for you and do the fast sequence of shots and then when you switch it off again you're back to your first curtain or mechanical shutter so you're always on the safe side and you just need to be aware if you use this focus bracketing with the R5 that you might lose a little bit of quality if you really intend to push the files far beyond what you normally should do. Yeah, so I hope you found this little test helpful and yeah, it helps you decide if you can shoot 12-bit or 14-bit if you have to worry about using the automatic bracketing on the R5. And yeah, if you liked it, please leave a thumbs up. Also subscribe for more videos and yeah, see you in the next one. Bye.